It'd been a good few years since I last completed Bioshock, and what better way to get back into one of the greatest games of all time than go for every single achievement in just one playthrough. So in this video, I'll show you how I did exactly that, starting with installing the free DLC because that's required for a secret achievement, and actually makes another slightly easier. I'll go into more detail about that later though. I started up a new game on hard difficulty. The Xbox 360 version doesn't have a survivor mode because that was introduced later with the PlayStation 3 release. Then once in the water, I disabled Vita Chambers in the settings. These just act as a respawn point when you die, but there's an achievement for completing the game without using them, so just to be safe, I changed the option in the settings. With these disabled, I would go back to my last save if I died, so I just tried my best to remember to save often, which you'll soon see I didn't always manage. After the iconic journey into Rapture, I was introduced to my new best buddy Atlas and found the trusty wrench. This was my primary weapon of choice because 1. It's a lot of fun, 2. It doesn't require ammo and 3. It can actually get ridiculously powerful with the right boosts and upgrades. Shortly after that I grabbed my first plasmid and picked up the first achievement of the video when I put it to use shocking a few splices chilling here in the water. This is also the area where the first audio diaries can be found. The historian achievement requires all 122 to be collected and of those 122, there are five missable because they're in areas that you can't return to. Two of the five are in the Welcome to Rapture level, so I made sure I grabbed them both before progressing. I obviously won't show you every audio diary, but I will mention the areas they're missable, just in case anyone wanted to use this as a rough guide or plan. And after being introduced to the Big Daddy and Little Sisters, and holding off a couple of waves of splicers, I completed the Welcome to Rapture level, which popped another achievement. Next up was the Medical Pavilion, and in my opinion this is the second best level in the game, providing a pretty incredible introduction to the full extent of the madness waiting for you in Rapture. A handful of achievements followed quite quickly, which were unlocked by completing a hack, hacking a security bot, a vending machine, a turret, a safe, and finally a security camera. And there's an achievement for completing 50 hacks, so from this point on I was pretty much just hacking everything that I came across. After that I found the wrench jockey tonic which is the first step towards wrench domination but in the early parts of the game I did use guns a fair amount. The medical pavilion has a few pretty scary moments and whilst I won't show them all there is one in particular worth mentioning because there's a bit of a trick to make it much easier to deal with. I came across a lovely tempting shotgun chilling on the floor with a spotlight on it and once picked up a small army of splicers will be triggered and can swarm you pretty easily but there's a conveniently placed broken sign up against the wall here which can be used for cover if you squeeze between it and the wall. All the splicers end up funneled in front of you and it just makes the encounter very straightforward. At this point I had cleared out nearly all of the levels so headed over to the first boss type enemy, Dr. Steinman. There's plenty of explosives to throw at him with telekinesis, but I completely whiffed my throw. It didn't really matter because before long my trusty security bot had given him a beating, and he'll always run into this flooded area when he gets low, so I shocked the water to finish him off and got another achievement. Next up was the introduction to Adam and the harvesting or saving of little sisters. I'll be saving them all in this video because it's needed for an achievement, and let's be honest, it's just the right thing to do. Another thing I want to note quickly is when I finished up each level, I would quickly refer to an online guide to check I'd collected all of the audio diaries before moving on, just to save any backtracking in the future. And with that done, there was only one thing left to do in the medical pavilion before leaving, take down my first big daddy. Obviously I'm at my weakest here without any upgrades to weapons or health etc, so this can be a tricky fight, but once again there is a nice little exploit to make it a lot easier. So once I aggroed the big daddy, I got it onto the other side of this desk to me and by simply keeping the analog stick running forward into the desk, it won't come round and attack. Look, I'm not proud of doing this, okay? But it just works so well it's hard to pass it up. Following that was Neptune's bounty and in order to progress through the fisheries, this lovely man Peach sent me on a mission to find a camera and photograph some splicers. There's quite a few achievements tied to the camera but the big one is maxing the research for all subjects those are all splicer types, big daddy variants, little sisters, and also security bots, turrets, and cameras. But as well as the achievements, you also get some extremely strong rewards for completing these. So basically from this point onwards, you want to be doing your best paparazzi impression. There are also some tonics which increase the rate at which your research progresses, and I'd 100% recommend using those until you are done. This did make the game start to feel slightly like a chore because I was basically spending more time hacking or photographing than I was actually playing and exploring. 
but it was completely self-inflicted in the name of achievement, so I dealt with it. Around this time, I also picked up an achievement for buying an extra plasmid slot, and I bought the target dummy plasmid, which is a pretty much get out of jail free card for the rest of the game, taking the attention of whatever you are fighting in sticky situations. I put it to use here to help take down one of the big daddies by hacking an RPG turret and keeping the big daddy focused on the dummy in front of the turret. It did end up destroying it, but by that point I could just finish it off with my shotgun. When Peach sent me off on my mission, he did give me a grenade launcher, so I'd use that to help with the big daddies, as well as the abundance of explosive barrels and canisters dotted around. With the camera in hand, I unlocked achievements for taking my first photo of the splicer, and then for taking one photo of the highest grade. The camera uses film as its ammo and this can be found around the world but more commonly it's sold in vending machines so I just made sure I constantly kept stocked up because I was getting through it very quickly. Pretty much every encounter I came across I'd place down a dummy and then take some nice arty photos. The first subject I maxed out was the gun splicer so with that achievement out of the way I no longer had to worry about photographing them. I do want to mention quickly that if you're planning on going for this achievement you don't need to rush through the research quite as quickly as I did because there's so many of each enemy type throughout the game. The only exception is the Nitro Splicer, the one that chucks the grenades. They're far less common than the others so you really want to focus on snapping each one you see until the research is done. Using the grenade launcher I took out the last big daddy of the level and returned to Peach to progress through his lovely frozen home. Unfortunately, he'd now gone insane and tried to kill me, but made quite the mistake of standing right next to some explosive barrels. So down he went and achievement unlocked. Shortly after that, I came across the first weapon upgrade station and got another achievement. There's a few tied to these, but long story short, you need to find them all. And after a quick run through the smuggler's hideout with a demonstration here of the power of the dummy, I came across the submarine housing Atlas's family. Unfortunately, Andrew Ryan had other ideas and that went bang so the plan changed and I found myself in the next level, Arcadia. Arcadia is one of the coolest looking levels for sure. Its purpose was to generate the oxygen needed for the city to survive under the sea. It also introduces a couple of bits of new content. First of all, there are the components used to craft items from new invent machines. There's an achievement for crafting 100 things, so it's best to save this for much later in the game because you can find tonics that reduce how many materials you need. So for now, I just made sure I looted everything that I could. And whilst clearing out the first part of the level, I completed my 50th hack and got a nice 40 gamer score for my efforts. There's also a new enemy type, the Houdini Splicer, which you meet in a bit of a jump scare scripted event. You get a really good reward for researching these, so I got snapping as quickly as possible. There's so many Houdini splices around that I quickly reached the research level to unlock the natural camouflage tonic, which enabled me to turn invisible by standing still. Obviously very useful for a lot of situations. Soon after that, I finished off the thug splicer research and picked up that achievement, and then I did something very dumb. I had just finished clearing the first part of Arcadia when I started making my way to the research room for the story, I came across this openish area with an RPG turret and remembered using this in previous playthroughs to help kill the big daddies. Unfortunately, I completely botched my attempt at shocking and hacking it and instead ended up dying. And it was at this point I realised I hadn't saved since the start of the level. So back to the beginning I went. In total, it was only about 20 minutes, but this game is quite intense so it felt a lot worse than that. I quickly caught back up to where I was and this time managed to not die whilst hacking the turret. Then shortly after used it to bring down the first big daddy of the level. At this point the forest had been poisoned so I was on a mission to create the cure and restore the oxygen supply. Venturing into the farmer's market which is like a side level to find the materials I needed. Whilst here I maxed the Houdini splicer research, upgraded one weapon fully and finished the rosy big daddy research for my next few achievements. And with the farmer's market cleared out, I returned to Arcadia and unlocked the basic inventor achievement for using the U invent machine for the first time, creating the cure for the forest, the Lazarus Vector. And then I came across something rather unexpected. A dead big daddy just chilling with the little sister next to it ready to be saved. Absolutely no idea how this happened and I haven't seen it before, but I was not complaining. With everything else in Arcadia mopped up, I deployed the Lazarus Vector, which popped the achievement for saving the forest, before moving on to probably the best level in the entire game. Fort Frolic is Rapture's adult paradise. Filled with shops and neon lights, it is the playground of Sander Cohen, perhaps the most unhinged person in the entire city. Off, 
In order to progress, Cohen requires a few targets to be killed, photographed, and then put onto his masterpiece. But before I got to any of that, I first had to spend a bit of time at the slot machines until I hit the jackpot, unlocking my first achievement of the level. With that out of the way, I got to completing Cohen's errands and exploring the extremely creepy surroundings. The place is filled with spider splices crawling across the ceilings, and even more unsettling are the bodies posed like statues. With spider splices all over the level, it didn't take long for me to max out their research and grab another achievement. And a few more followed for fully upgrading a second weapon, taking a photo of one of each enemy type, and fully researching the Little Sisters. One of the research rewards for the Big Daddy type found here is the upgraded wrench jockey, so very important for the build I was running. And once I'd photographed them as much as I could, I took them out using the grenade launcher's proximity mines, and also trap bolts from the crossbow, a reward for helping Cohen with his work. These are extremely strong and can make for some pretty fun traps. I also want to mention quickly a cool easy to miss detail. This poster here with the names Patrick and Moira, the same names Atlas uses for his child and his wife. I went back to hunting Cohen's targets and finished up his masterpiece, unlocking another achievement and witnessing a big daddy sprint down the stairs slightly ruining his grand entrance. At this point, I'd all but completed Fort Frolic, but there was just one more thing to do. Unleash what are without any doubt the most terrifying enemies in the entire game. I very purposefully saved this bit until the end. So walking into Sinclair Spirits, I came across a lovely freaky arrangement of plastered spider splices. And by pressing this button behind the desk, I ventured down into the basement. There's a lovely statue sitting in the corner of the dim lit room, but more importantly, a weapon upgrade station. I may have completed this game about five times and also be nearly 30 years old, but what happens next will never not freak me out. With the horrifying silent splices now gone from upstairs and hunting me down, I made sure to not hang around, quickly clearing out the now open flooded basement area to pick up the tonic. Then I dashed back to the bathysphere, stopping briefly to swap around my tonics. Whilst in Fort Frolic, I created Bloodlust, which gives you health and eve when damaging enemies with the wrench. I also started using Frozen Field, which gives increased damage and the chance to freeze the target. With the most nerve-wracking part of the game behind me, I cruised through the next level, unlocking achievements for fully upgrading my third weapon, purchasing every slot in a tonic track, and fully researching the Bouncer Big Daddy variant. Speaking of Big Daddies, whilst fighting one I had this happen which I've never seen before, I somehow managed to fire it up into the ceiling. It made for an easy kill at least. Shortly after that I made it to Rapture Central Control and the game's big reveal. This area also has the other three missable audio diaries so I made sure to grab those on my way through. And once I bludgeoned Andrew Ryan with a golf club for my next achievement, I was into Olympus Heights. It was here that I finished up the Nitro Splicer research, which was my last requirement for the Research PhD achievement, and on top of that I upgraded my fourth weapon. Olympus Heights is the location of the apartments owned by the upper class citizens of Rapture, so there's a few familiar names here whose properties it's possible to explore. One of those is Sander Cohen, and by interrupting the dancers I lured him out of his bedroom, sat him down with a wonderful headshot, and picked up the achievement for finding his room. There's also another achievement for taking a picture of his body, and then finally a weapon upgrade station in here also. So for all these reasons, it's best to leave him alive in Fort Frolic. And continuing on with the story, I broke Fontaine's mind control for another achievement, and then took down the remaining big daddies in the level. Another win for the target dummy right here. I didn't even need to fire a single bullet, I just got the RPG turret to kill the big daddy for me. And the final thing I did was upgrade my fifth weapon before moving on to what is pretty much the last level in the game. At this point, I had the majority of the achievements unlocked, but still only around half of the gamer score. Those remaining were worth a lot, and Point Prometheus is where the gamer score started to really roll in. Whilst hunting down the armor pieces to become a big daddy, I maxed all plasmid and tonic tracks, as well as finding the last weapon upgrade station. I unlocked the Historian achievement by picking up the last audio diary and then another for finding all parts of the Big Daddy suit. And to wrap up Point Prometheus I dealt with the last little sister and then grabbed the Tonic Collector achievement for unlocking my 53rd Tonic. I think originally this was either finding, buying or inventing all 53 Tonics in the game, but with the addition of the DLC there are some extra Tonics. I'm pretty sure that I found them all anyway, but I hadn't invented those specific ones so the DLC gives you a bit of leeway for this achievement. Next it was time to complete everyone's favourite escort mission and really it's not that bad, just a few waves of splices to fend off and a big daddy that goes down rather easily. 
I think I just managed to scrape through it though, judging by the basically empty health bar the little sister ended with. Now I'd reached the preparation room for the final boss, it was time to tick off the last two miscellaneous achievements. Ammo Inventor for creating one of each ammo type, and Avid Inventor for creating 100 items overall. I worked quickly through the list and unlocked Ammo Inventor before using up all my supplies and... Disaster struck! Avid Inventor didn't pop. I won't lie, I started freaking out a bit here, thinking that all achievements in Run Run Dream might be over, but luckily you can still backtrack from this point and I'd look online at good places to collect supplies. So I went back to Farmer's Market and killed the infinitely spawning enemies in the Beehive area. I've never had this problem before in previous runs, but I do know what caused it, and that was by using the Frozen Field Tonic. See, when an enemy is frozen and shatters, they don't drop any loot, and that obviously just adds up over time to missing out on a lot. But regardless, after about 20 minutes of farming enemies in this spot, I used up a bunch of materials, and to my massive relief, unlocked the achievement. All that remained now was defeating Fontaine, so I reloaded the save at the final room and went up the lift. This boss fight is pretty underwhelming, and even on hard, you can completely nullify him. My approach was to pile 5 or 6 explosive canisters around the base of the steps, and normally I'd proximity mine them, but for some reason I didn't have any at this point, so instead I just detonated them all with a grenade. That deals with the entire first phase, and then for the rest I literally just stood and zapped him with the electric gel from the chemical thrower. I did also put some trap bolts to the sides to stop any splices getting to me. I didn't notice any splices, so I assumed that worked fine. And once I drained him of Adam three times, the game was done and it was time to be showered with achievements. First for defeating Atlas, and then the final three for completing the game on hard, completing the game on hard without using a Vita Chamber, and choosing to save every little sister in the game. So in the end, there are a couple of sticky moments, but I managed to 100% the game in just the one run like I planned. And that's the end of this video, so thanks everyone for watching and hope you enjoyed it. This game is still amazing and you should play it if you haven't. Uh, let me know if you've got any games you'd like to see in a video like this and I'll catch you in the next one.